Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this course, right now we are studying the process of speech production as described in the Paninian Grammar which is very fundamental. Before that we studied the meta language of Paninese Grammar and its important features. Now, when we are studying the process of speech production as described in the Paninian grammar, we have already studied the cognitive aspect of it and then the physical aspect. Then we have studied the features of the sounds that are thus produced. Now, we are looking at the description of the individual sounds and the features of those individual sounds. We have already studied the features of vowels. We took each vowel individually, independently, separately and studied its features. And this separate individual study does have quite a lot of significance as shall be clear in the subsequent lectures. We also studied the other sets of consonants namely the semivowels, the sibilants and also the categories called a yoga vaha. We looked at the features of sounds and the first and the foremost feature we studied was the length of the sounds and thus we classified the sounds straight away into two categories consonants and vowels. And so first we studied features of vowels, then we studied features of some consonants, sibilants and ayogavaha and before that the semi-vowels or antastha. Now remain the class consonants which we need to study. So we studied the process of speech production by studying the source called Paniniya Shiksha and the verses mentioned on the slide atma buddhya sametyarthan mano yungte vivakshaya manakkaya agni mahanti saprerayati marutam marutas tu rasi charan mandram janayati swaram sodirno murdhya vihato vaktramapadya marutah varanan janayate we noted down eight stages atma buddhya sametyarthan and Mano Yungte Vivakshaya, the first two, and we said that these are the cognitive stages of the process of speech production, and the rest of them, they are the physical or the biological processes. Then the next ones are Maya Manakkaya Agnimahanti, the third, Saprerayati Marutam, the fourth, Marutas Turasi Charan Mandram Janayati Swaram, the fifth, Sodirno Murdhyavihato, sixth. Vaktramapadya Marutaha 7th and Varananjanayate final and the 8th one after which the audible speech is produced and now we are studying the features of this audible speech and we have already started studying the features of what is known as consonant which is produced with half a matra time. Amongst them we have already studied antastha semi vowels, we have already studied sibilants, ushma, we have already studied ayogavah. Now what remains is the class consonants also known as sparsha. Let us study each of these cat the, this class in detail. Now the important point to note here is that while pronouncing these consonants the tongue either actually touches the place of articulation in the oral cavity or the tongue is directed towards that particular place of articulation, shaping the air stream thus in a particular direction. 
with a particular focus so that the air stream hits that particular place and then gets thrown out and then is perceived to be the delivery of a particular sound k, ch, t, t, p, etc. These are called class consonants because they are arranged in a group or class of 5, each thus representing the commonality of the place of articulation. Each group is referred to in a technical metalinguistic way by adding a vowel u after the first sound of that class. This is stated by A1169 which we shall study in the course of time. So for example, u attached to k and you get the term ku, ku stands for 5 consonants beginning with the consonant k appearing in the same row k, k, g, g and ng. Chu stands for ch, ch, j, j, y. Tu stands for t, th, d, d, n. Tu stands for t, th, d, d, n. And pu stands for p, p, b, b, m. Let us now study each of these consonants and note down their features. First, let us take the k class which appears also as first of the consonants k. The sthana or the place of articulation of k is kantha or vilam. The abhyantara prayatna of k is sprishta or contact that is touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. So it is sprishta. Then the bahya prayatna of k is shwasa that is breath aghosha, voiceless, vivara, openness and also alpa prana that is less amount of breath than the other letter. This is called non-aspirate. This is how k gets described, an important sound. Then comes kh whose place of articulation is kantha or vilam whose abhyantara prayatna is sprushta that is contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. The bahya prayatna is shvasa, aghosha and vivara same as k. The only difference is this is maha prana. K was alpa prana, this is maha prana. It requires more breath. It is called an aspirate sound k, k and k. Next we have g. The place of articulation is kantha, abhyantara prayatna is sprashta, contact that is touch of the tongue with the place of articulation and the vaiha prayatna is different now. It is nad, ghosha, samvara, and also alpa prana. If we keep a finger on our throat like this, while pronouncing g, we can sense a vibration as against the pronunciation of k. That is what gets reflected in these bahya prayatnas, nada ghosha. Similarly, the next consonant in the k class is g. The sthana is kantha, vilam, abhyantara prayatna is sprishta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. The bahya prayatna is same as g except mahaprana. So the bahya prayatna is nada, ghosha and samvara resonance, voice and closure. G however differs from G in terms of being a mahaprana, requires more breath, is called an aspirate sound, G, G and G. 
the last sound in this class is called ng, ng. The place of articulation is kantha vilam plus nasika. This is an additional place of articulation of this sound. Kantha plus nasika. The abhyantara prayatna is sprishta, touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. The bahya prayatna is nad, ghosha, sambhar and also alpa prana that is less breath or this sound is called non-aspirate. Remember this sound is to be pronounced as ng as you pronounce pronounce it in ang ng ng. This is the pronunciation of this written symbol ng. Let us go to the next class which begins with ch, ch. Even though in some other modern Indian languages the same written symbol is used to convey some other sound as well namely ts, ts. But that is not what is available in Sanskrit as a meaning bearing unit. It is only ch which in Sanskrit has got that value. The description of ch is done in the Paninian grammatical tradition in the following manner. The place of articulation is talu or palate. The abhyantara prayatna is prashta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation and the bahya prayatna is shvasa, aghosha and vivara. Also it is alpa prana. It requires less breath than say ch. So, ch is called non-aspirate sound. The next sound is ch. The place of articulation of this sound is talu. Abhyantara prayatna is sprishta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. And the bahya prayatna is shvasa, breath, aghosha, voiceless and vivara, openness. With Mahaprana as the feature. It requires more breath. It is called an aspirate sound. Ch. Compare ch with ch. Next, we have j. Once again, in some modern Indian languages, we have a sound z which gets represented by the similar written symbol that is not present in Sanskrit. It is only j which is present which is what is described in the following manner in the Paninian grammatical tradition. The place of articulation or sthana is talu, the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta that is contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation and the bahya prayatna of j is nada, ghosha and samvar, resonance, voice and closure. Let us now look at j. Once again, we must note that in modern Indian languages, there is another sound z which gets represented by the same written symbol. That sound does not exist in Sanskrit sound inventory. The sound that exists in the Sanskrit sound inventory is j and it has got following features as per the description in the Paninian grammatical tradition. The place of articulation is talu, the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. The bahya prayatna is nad, ghosha and samvar, resonance, voice as well as closure. And this is alpa prana, requires less breath than say it is a non-aspirate sound, j. The next sound is j. Once again, in the modern Indian languages, another sound, z, also gets represented by this written symbol, which is not the case with Sanskrit. 
In Sanskrit we have J whose description is given below as far as the Paninian grammatical tradition is concerned. The place of articulation is Talu, the Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta and the Vaihya Prayatna is Nada, Ghosha and Samvara, resonance, voice and closure. This J is Mahaprana, requires more breath and this is also an aspirate. Finally, in the Ch class, we have the sound Y. It is pronounced as Y. The place of articulation of this sound is Talu plus Nasika, the nose. The Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta and the Vaihya Prayatna is Nada, Ghosha and Samvara, resonance, voice and closure. This sound is also an alpa prana which requires less amount of breath than say j. It is called non-aspirate. Let us look at the next class, t class. The first letter is t. The place of articulation for this is murdhan or the roof of the oral cavity. The abhyantara prayatna is prashta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. So, in pronouncing this sound, the tongue that rises above and touches the roof of the oral cavity for a fraction of millisecond and because of that, this sound t is produced and each and every sound thus produced is distinct from the rest. This is also the purpose of this description to know each sound distinctly from one another. Now the Vaihya Prayatna of T is Shwasa that is breath, Aghosha that is voiceless and Vivara openness and T is Alpaprana less breath or non-aspirate. Then comes Th, Th. The place of articulation is Murdhan or roof of the oral cavity. Its Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. And the Vaihya Prayatna is Shwasa, Aghosha and Vivara. And also Mahaprana or more breath that is the sound is called aspirate. Compare T with Th, T with Th. Then comes the sound D. The place of articulation is Murdhan, the roof of the oral cavity. The Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta or contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. And the Vaihya Prayatna is Nada, Ghosha and Samvar, resonance, voice and closure. This is also Alpa Prana, requires less breath and it is non-aspirate. The next sound is D, D. The place of articulation is Murdhan or roof of the oral cavity. The Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta, contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. The Bhaiya Prayatna is Nada, resonance, Ghosha, voice and Samvara that is closure. This D is also Mahaprana. It requires more breath. It is an aspirate sound. And finally in this class, we have the consonant N, whose thana is Murdhan, roof of the oral cavity plus Nasika or nose. The Abhyantara Prayatna is Sprashta, contact or and the Bhaiya Prayatna is Nada, Ghosha and Samvar, resonance, voice and closure. This is Alpa Prana, requires less breath and is called non-aspirate. Let us move to the next class, that is the class. The first consonant is T. The place of articulation for T is Danta, tooth or teeth. 
इट्स आभ्यंतर प्रयत्न इज स्पृष्ट कॉन्टैक्ट टच ऑफ द टंग विद द प्लेस ऑफ आर्टिकुलेशन वेर वी सी क्लियरली एक्सपीरियंस दैट द टंग टच इज द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द टीथ और अ टूथ वेल प्रोनाउंसिंग साउंड्स ऑफ दिस क्लास द बाह्य प्रयत्न इज श्वास अघोष एंड विवार ब्रेथ वॉइसलेसनेस एंड ओपननेस and this is alpa prana requires less breath and is called non aspirate the next sound is th the place of articulation is danta tooth or teeth abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation the bahya prayatna is shwasa aghosha and vivara breath voiceless and openness this is also mahaprana requires more breath so it's called an aspirate sound the next sound is d the place of articulation is danta the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation namely the tooth or teeth the bahya prayatna is nada resonance ghosha voice and some vara that is closure this is also alpa prana requires less breath and is called non aspirate the next sound is dh the place of articulation is danta tooth or teeth abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact a touch of the tongue with the place of articulation by ya prayatna is nad resonance ghosha voice and some var closure this is also mahaprana requires more breath and is called an aspirate and the last sound in this class is n whose place of articulation is danta tooth or teeth plus nasika the nose abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation the bahya prayatna is nad resonance ghosha voice and some var closure this na is also alpa prana requires less breath and is called non aspirate sound now we go to the last amongst these classes p class which begins with the sound p the place of articulation for p is lips or ostho both the lips the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact touch of the tongue with the place of articulation namely the lips the bahya prayatna is shwasa breath aghosh voiceless and vivara openness p is alpa prana requires less breath and is called non aspirate sound the next one is p whose place of articulation is lips ostho the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact touch of the tongue with the place of articulation namely the lips the bahya prayatna for p is same as p except mahaprana so the bahya prayatna for for p is shwasa breath aghosha voiceless and vivara openness p is mahaprana and requires more breath it is called an aspirate sound the next consonant in this class is b the place of articulation is ostho lips the abhyantara prayatna is sprashta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation the lips the bahya prayatna is nad resonance ghosha voice and samvara closure b is alpa prana it requires less breath and it is called 
non aspirate sound b the next is b b the place of articulation is lips oshthau the abhyantara prayatna is sprushta contact or touch of the tongue with the place of articulation the bahya prayatna is nad ghosha and samvara resonance voice and closure this bh is the mahaprana it requires more breath it is an aspirate sound bh the last amongst these class consonants is m the place of articulation is lips oshthau and nasika nose the abhyantara prayatna is sprushta contact touch of the tongue with the place of articulation the bahya prayatna is nad ghosha and samvara resonance voice and closure m is also alpa prana it requires less breath it is called non aspirate sound these features we have studied pertaining to each and every sound mentioned in the traditional sound inventory and also the pratyahara sutras that we have studied earlier so to summarize what we have seen the question arises is what is the function of these features so they act as parameters parameters in selecting a substitute from amongst many in place of a substituent as stated by the sutra sthane antaratamah 1150 so the other feature of the other function of these features is the distinct comprehension of each sound so if we read these sounds one by one p and p they are different sounds b and b they are different sounds even though they are produced using the same place of articulation these sounds are different if you know these features you will be able to tell each sound distinctly from the other this is a, this is an extremely important function of these features so we shall study these functions in the next lecture but before we close let us follow the practice we have been following let us study let us read the mangala charana from a celebrated text in the paninian grammatical tradition this is taken from bala manorama a commentary on the vyakarana siddhanta kaumudi and the words reads like this sa jayati divya natesho नृत्यति योसौ चिदंबर सभायां पाणिन्याद्या मुनयो यस्य च दयया मनोरथान भजन आई विल रीड अगेन सजयति दिव्य नटेशो नृत्यति योसौ चिदंबर सभायां पाणिन्याद्या मुनयो यस्य च दयया मनोरथान अभजन एंड देन द फाइव सूत्रस ऑफ टुडे taken from the 4.4 the fourth chapter fourth pad fourth chapter fourth sub chapter fourth adhyaya fourth pad here are the sutras and i'll read prag vahate shthak tena divyati ghanati jayati jitam samskritam kulatha kopadhat an tarati i repeat प्राग वहते ठक तेन दिव्यति खनति जयति जितम संस्कृतम कुलत्थकोपधात अन तरति थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेंशन